I think virtual production represents a truly pivotal moment in, in any kind of production. Virtual production as, as, as a workflow and as a set of techniques is, is really applicable uh, everywhere. What it's done is revolutionized the industry in terms of bringing game engine technology and virtual technology and enhancing uh, what you can do in front of the camera live versus having to do things in post. In the place that virtual production is right now, it's a new frontier, and I know that phrase is thrown around a lot, but there's not yet a consistent workflow from your LED wall, your content, your lighting, your camera, your post-production. And at Quasar Science, we're trying to help push that narrative and to push the technology forward to give filmmakers new tools to tell stories. They always hit that governor in their mind where they say, I can't do it because I don't, I, I can't set the Sequoia National Woods on fire for this shot. But now with virtual production, you're able to like create that environment that's in the mind, kind of like an animator would. At Quasar Science, we are constantly trying to advance our knowledge in virtual production. So we've partnered with Orbital Studios and Disguise with their D3 servers to test out our image-based lighting solutions. The intention of this test is to evaluate the, the workflows that goes into lighting a subject using traditional lighting fixtures, but using the uh, control capabilities of a media server. The workflow is called image-based lighting, where you're essentially using an image, uh, or in this case, real-time render graphics, to uh, control the pixels of these fixtures. When working in an LED volume, using the LED walls to light your subjects is not the best approach. The biggest problem with LED walls is that the spectrum coming out of them is extremely deficient and spiky. So subject skin tone, um, wardrobe, props and whatnot don't look correct in camera versus what you're getting on set. With the advent of all these LED walls, there's, there was this myth in the early days that you could just light from the LED walls and you wouldn't need lighting. Um, that's false. Just lighting from an LED wall does not replicate great skin tone. In fact, it's pretty terrible. We are now experiencing a heavy push into the, the usage of these kind of hybrid setups where you have LED video walls behind the talent and around the talent, where you also use traditional lighting uh, fixtures to augment the usage of LED video products. Traditionally, when creating lighting effects, you're often tasked with taking one or two sources to get them to flicker or flash in a certain pattern to try and create that fire effect. But what we found is when you take the actual video file of a fire and map it to the lights, you can create an even better, more realistic fire effect. So with the disguise system, we've taken in some 2D video files and we've mapped those into our 848 system. We're running multicast SACN from disguise directly to the light fixtures. You will have a single point of control. You have the control interface controlling the, the, the render engine, the game engine, the lighting fixtures, receiving the tracking data and also outputting the pixels to the LED video screen. You can have one person uh, controlling all your different lighting products on, on set. You don't need to communicate, okay, what kind of color should we put up here? Oh, let's put up this color. Because all the data you need to control your fixtures and control exactly what value each pixel should have is already there inside the environment that is being rendered. There are a lot of ways to get your video footage onto your lights. You can do it native from Unreal or a 3D game engine. You could do it through Disguise. You could also pixel map it with the lighting console. This gives you a lot of options, both creatively and in control, to give the lights to output how you want it. At Orbital, we're doing it both through Disguise for tests and we're doing it with the lighting console. With image-based lighting, you get more interactivity that you'd see in the real world. So often, Source lighting is not just a big soft panel. You know, the light is bouncing off a tree, it's bouncing off a building, and it's dynamic. When you can create your, in a sense, key light with sort of a more dynamic, interactive light, it becomes more real world. And when we're trying to tie subjects more into the background of this virtual environment, 
having a more interactive key light and more interactive lighting, even if it's just subtle, subtle movements, it's more realistic because that's how the real world works. Uh, Quasar Science has a slight called the 848 um, and we were using it in, in addition to our wall. What they did was they made it so that you could map the 848, the, this big thing, and you, with an H.264 video file that we could extract it out of Unreal and then we put into their light. He threw it up and I saw the asset playing and I'm like, that's the Rosetta Stone that we've been missing. That was such a revolutionary thing because it worked. And not only did it work, once you get all the pieces right, it becomes not a technical exercise anymore. It really just becomes a true extension of, of how we think as artists and filmmakers and, and cinematographers. The tools that we had previously were just the LED walls. For the first time, we now have more advanced tools to give to filmmakers that they can now light in a new way they hadn't thought of before. These types of products, they really offer some, some pretty substantial advantages, especially when you think about mounting them, for example, in a ceiling uh, where you're concerned about weight and rigging time, etc. And that's where I think where the more lightweight uh, type fixture from, for example, Quasar Science would really come in handy. The 848 seems to solve all those problems with getting video files into an actual working light that is a singular source that replicates the LED wall just off camera. Once you get all these really deep technical issues figured out, you don't think about the technical stuff anymore. I was just having fun. I was just thinking in terms of the art. The ability to build a large grid of fixtures and create a uniform pixel distribution with really nice colors, really nice output, um, at a fraction of the cost of rigging a, uh, a really high resolution LED video wall up in the ceiling. I think those are some, some, some key benefits.